the concept of the body in India in itself has this interesting uh, view which runs alongside each other, these two parallel views, two parallel perspectives. You know, that which is linked to the classical Advaita Vedanta uh, with its main exponent in Adi Shankara, who, scholarly speaking, have crystallized, summarized, and brought down everything in a fully compacted way, even if we to go by the great sayings, the so-called Mahavakyas, that Adi Shankara did not invent it. He simply elaborated them and give, gave them a new to his generation of people of India, which is eighth century of the common era. You know, Aham Brahmasmi, Tatvamasi, you know, all this, thou art that, I am totality, you know, I am this, this is that. So all these great sayings attributed to Adishankara serve as cornstones of everything we know about Advaita Vedanta, all the way to the Ramana Maharshi, let's say, and into the fully-fledged scene of the new Advaita or the non-duality. And in that perspective, we will now have to really, really be attentive and tread slowly. Such practices known as neti neti, which simply means not this, not this, is a practice just as any other practice which meant to uh, create a systematic way of disentangling a sense of identity, of consciousness, from the conglomerate of how, let's say, soul, which is nothing other than totality of awareness, is dressed in. So this dressing, this layers, this is how the soul, Atma, is dressed, is true to that line of thought in Advaita Vedanta and true to another parallel line of thought which is associated with Tantric perspective which in turn is also uh, said to be the earlier Upanishadic teachings, where the emphasis is not so much on so-called spitting it out, but by gobbling it down. It's a slang term, of course, to simplify the perspectives, the respective perspectives adopted by the camps of the Advaita Vedantists to that of the Tantrikas. In the Advaita Vedanta, the path of the recluse, right? It's a perfect path of the recluse, as expounded by Adi Shankara. Adi Shankara was a sannyasi. He was a maha sannyasi, and Adi Shankara has began that order of sannyasis. The order of Shankara is one of the most coveted orders of sannyasins known today in India. So if you are initiated into the uh, sannyas of Shankara, you see, this is considered to be the highest uh, honored way of that, what is known as a reclusive way of life. And if any of you are familiar a little bit with what sannyasi means, it's a very, very serious stuff. Sannyasin is not an uh, armchair philosopher, non-dualist, neo advaitin who feels comfortably uh, joyous to delve into non-duality teachings after a good meal, maybe a glass of wine and some good uh, prospect for an evening in front of the Netflix. But it's a complete and utter walking out of this life. Walking out of this life to the degree where his own mother culturally has no right to take him back if the decision is made. This is not a light affair. So any 
uh, attempts at casually giving these Western interpretations of uh, much more, well, to begin with, much more sophisticated slash disciplined approach that traditional understanding of the sannyas in India versus a nonchalant uh, tourist-like attitude of a Westerner who travels through a myriad of cultural landscapes very often unknowingly, unawaringly adopting that attitude of colonial intellectualism whilst at the very same time simply being a consumer in his own society. So this is where the crucial difference between a proper understanding of the teachings of the classical Advaita Vedanta as the par, excel, par excellence path towards self-realization, where one literally sheds off any ties with societal order, speaking of breaking it away from the matrix. This is a real taking of the pill. It's not some kind of a pretense, a composite. It's the true walking out. And of course, it is then thrown to that uh, a, an organized chaos that India as a culture uh, known for. Whereas the simultaneously with that, in parallel with that stream, perspective where neti neti is not of much use, tantric perspective of gobbling it down, in other words, it's an all-encompassing understanding where a conscious act is based on conscious understanding that there is nothing other than consciousness. Nothing exists that is not consciousness. And if nothing exists that is not consciousness, then even the act of sannyas is also does not make any sense because from the tantric point of view, you cannot renounce energy. You cannot renounce life, therefore. All this enunciation taking place not at the level of decision-making to quit or not to quit the societal order. 